Hello, Yu-Gi-Oh! players, and welcome to Serious Business Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm your host, the RJB Zero. I normally say Yu-Gi-Oh! on business casual, but today I'm talking about Dragon Ruler th competitive theory, um, as promised, which means that there isn't going to be a whole lot of casual to my discussion today. So without further ado, let's get down to business. Um, so, the first thing that I notice when I realize that I'm playing against a bad dragon player, um, which I am occasionally, since I just started with the deck, the th first thing that I notice is that they use their dragons willy-nilly without consideration as to which dragon they're using or how many dragons they have at their disposal or what kind of resources they have. They will deck thin as much as possible in a turn. They will draw as much as possible with Sacred Sword of Seven Stars, and they will spam as much as possible. Uh, and the only consideration as to which dragon they're using comes from, basically, attack and defense stats. Um, which means that you can actually tell, if that's how a dra bad dragon player plays, then the most important things about competitive dragon theory comes from how you use your dragons, how you use your resources. Um, and one of the most important things about understanding how to use which dragons when is to know what your dragons can do for you. Now let's see if you guys can guess what dragon I think is the most important one before I say it. Um, I, I realize that Blaster is the most popular one, but in my opinion, the best dragon ruler is Tempest. Not only does it have a semi-important discard effect with your elementals, which can search out any one of your dragons as well as some alternative targets, but once again, it does have the most alternative targets in your deck. When you're playing with dragon plants, Tempest can search out not only other Tempests, but your Debris Dragon and your Dragonity Corsescas, which means that this card is your most important resource. Being able to manage your Tempests properly decides whether you basically have the resources that you want and the diversity of plays that you need in order to um, make sure that you can counter whatever your opponent does um, and win the game. The second most important one, I suppose, is Blaster. It usually has one alternative target, uh, which is your Flambell Guard, and it's got that really powerful effect, elemental effect from your hand uh, to pop a card on the board and then to... Um, then it also has um, the most attack points of any of them. Then you've got Redox, which has a really important elemental effect, um, probably the most important elemental effect out of all of them, um, which allows you to revive things like Crimson Bladers, which are crucial to the deck um, and make some serious plays. And I'm sorry, Title, but for this deck, um, I mean, you may have the highest diversity of decks that use you, but for this particular deck, Title is the most useless. Its elemental effect is garbage basically for this deck um, and it doesn't have any alternative targets. So why do we need to know that? Well when you're playing in the dragon, um, when you're playing a dragon deck, if you are in any kind of decently difficult matchup, knowing which of this, these cards you have to banish at which time is your most important thing. Say you have a um, like a card trooper in your graveyard and a maxi in your hand. The question that you'd have to use then, um, if your options, or if your options for banishing, um, with, or if you if you have to either banish a tempest or a redox, is do you want to have the ability to revive a monster later, or do you want to have that alternative target in the debris dragon? Um, or in a Dragonity Corsesca. Do you want to be able to search out that Dragonity Corsesca without the Dragon Ravine and be able to synchro with the monster that you use with the Red Ox, or the synchro with the Red Ox itself? Um, or do you want to hold on to that and have that revival effect? That's one of the more important decisions to be able to make. Um, and also, knowing the alternative sheer number of alternative targets for Tempest, do you actually want to use it that much, or do you want to set up with Tempest and be able to use its effect later in the game to get... Um, uh, debris dragon plays off. One of the problems with Taito having no alternative targets and no good elemental effect is you have to decide um, very carefully when, if ever, you want to banish it. Um, because if you just banish too many of it, you're going to find yourself running out of resources with Taito. At least with Blaster, you can go for that Flamville Guard um, and use that as an alternative target. I've seen people starting to use Trigon in this deck as another alternative target with Blaster. 
Um, but with title, really, you have to use this card for your summons. You can use it as cost for Sacred Sword of Seven Stars, and then you have to sit on this title because you don't want to lose that resource. Um, but sometimes you absolutely have to, and sometimes um, the difficult decision with title is the fact that since it doesn't have any other useful effects or useful uses, um, do you want to use this card as a resource faster than your monsters with more useful effects like um, Blaster or Redox? Um, so the other th thing is that quickly now that you have that lineup and that, that set of decisions going through your brain is how often do you deck thin? Because one of the problems with this deck now that you don't have the babies is almost every time that you banish a monster you're going to be deck thinning. Which means you're going to be running out of targets in your deck pretty quickly. Um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because every time you do that, you gain a little bit more advantage. But sometimes deck thinning immediately isn't necessarily the best response. Sometimes you want to use your monsters to actually use their effects and to summon them. Um, and you can't necessarily do that if you use your Sacred Sword of Seven Stars. Um, so the decisions behind resource management and dragons are really the most important thing for the deck. Um, I realize that this is not the most in-depth video. I'll be able to do a lot more competitive Dragon Theory in the future, but this is the most basic tenet of, um, of Dragon Theory, which is knowing which of your dragons is the most important at which time, um, and knowing how much you have to deck thin and how many resources you have available to you, um, because it eventually, get, when you're in a Dragon Mirror match or in a dragon match against decks that are equally powerful, like um, title mermails or spell books, um, the most important consideration that you have to use, or the, the person who wins is going to be the person who manages their resources better. Um, so that is the basic idea behind, um, behind competitive dragon theory. I'll get more in depth, and I'll hopefully have some videos with my um, most ghetto of ghetto dragon ruler decks um, at the moment. Later on, I'm losing my trains of thought. Meanwhile, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, let me know why. And then uh, hit that subscribe button for more competitive theory and more Dragon Ruler stuff, uh, as well as a lot of other Yu-Gi-Oh! shenanigans coming up in the near future. Meanwhile, thank you guys for watching Yu-Gi-Oh! and Business Casual. I'm your host, the RJB Zero, and I got a jet. See you guys.